It may be July. We may be out in the desert, but we're getting rained on right now. So I truck off in the distance. You see the big ore bin right there. My friends are right there. The portal we're here for is that one there, which doesn't look very impressive at all. But if you look at the size of this waste rock pile, and also it carries over to this, across the this, remains of this trestle here, it looks pretty extensive. So the outside appearance may be a bit deceiving in regard to the portal. So we're gonna go in there and give this one a shot. Heard decent things about it based on the map and its history, which I'll talk about inside. So, gear up and get on in there. All right, just inside the portal here, immediately to the left, there's a little drift going off and bending to the right. I don't have high hopes for that, but well, I'm here. Let's see what's off to the left here. Looks pretty featureless, but you never know. Oh, I got some old strap rail. That's kind of cool. Didn't expect to see that. So, which means this may be a little more extensive than I expected. Oh, it's still going. I thought that was just going to be a little exploratory crosscut, but that shows you the value of assumptions, right? Another little pocket right there. There's a look at the minerals we're working with in here. I actually feel a little bit of airflow coming from this direction, so this might tie into something else. There are a few little shafts on the surface, and I wonder if it ties into one of those. Got those really old unmilled timbers from the outside world, just outside the portal, jammed in here. Pretty interesting mineralization here. I can see why they would want to have followed that up. Obviously the rats like this location as well. They probably think that the minerals here are promising as well. Do a little rat prospecting. This is much more significant than I expected. Still running back. Ground's pretty decent. There's a few slabs that have come off, but nothing major. Looks like a little natural fissure right here. Another unmilled timber just from outside. Huh. That looks awfully narrow to have been created by a miner, but at the same time, who knows? That's maybe two feet wide at the most. Again, the rats have been busy in there. There's a corresponding one over here, which again, that makes me think it's more of a natural fissure. Hmm. All right, carrying on. Got really tall and skinny all of a sudden. Oh, this is cool looking. Look at the stoke chamber we have here. It runs way up there, actually. That's probably 80 feet up or more. And I can feel a little bit of airflow here, so I'm wondering if that doesn't hit something on the outside somewhere. I'm impressed. I thought that was just going to be a little dinky crosscut. Ooh, looks like there's some kind of wind station up ahead. Interesting, these slabs right here, you can really see the line there, contact zone between the two different mineral types. Let's take a look back at the stope. Again, those are all unmilled pieces of wood. And the miners would have had planks running between those to stand on as they work their way up. That's pretty cool. Looks like we've got something here. It's something I wouldn't want to fall down. Can't tell how far down that goes yet. Little pocket here. You see that whitish colored rock really clearly. 
Oh, that goes down the way. Huh. I've got a better look at it over here. So that obviously had a windlass here. You can see the marks where it was set into the wood there. I don't know what that means. 70, maybe 75 feet, I don't know. Oh, you see the old skipway there too. You see the side of it here, possibly for uh, dragging tools up and down as well. That goes down quite a way. That looks like there's another level right there. See that platform right there? There's something cutting off underneath what we just walked over. And it keeps dropping down. So that windlass is right there. We've got looks like some old canvas or something right here. Some of the jeans people are probably all excited about that. The drift keeps running that way. I'm in a little stoop. Oh, here we go. There's the outside world. Turn the light off for a second. See that daylight? That's a shaft right there. Looks like it might be a level up there too. Right where that wood is. Looks like that might be a level there that the shaft ran down to. And they just tied it in here for ventilation perhaps. There's, looks like a, possibly a dead rabbit through here. Yeah, I think that's a dead rabbit judging by the, the teeth. Or maybe, no, maybe that's a bird. Yeah, that's a bird. Never mind. I saw one in another mine like this very recently. Actually, you know what? I'm on the fence about that. Because birds don't have teeth. What is this animal? Probably a rabbit, huh? My initial hunch was probably correct. Yeah, like the big legs. Yeah. Yeah, I went back and forth on that because it's, yeah. All right, viewers, I'm not stupid. It was a rabbit. Another uh, large stove here that actually connects to the outside roll as well. You see, they cleared out an area there and then up above. Way up there, there's some daylight. And then there's some stuff up here as well. A little pocket that cleared out there. There's something going off there. Looks like it might face out, we'll check in a minute. I'll stick with this for now. A platform right there. Man, it keeps going. So there's they left sort of a, a sideways support pillar or column right there, and then hauled everything else out around here you see vein right here they were working on and then see that gap it runs up up there too so they must have left this as support so this stuff here that you're seeing that's the ore they were mining out like i said they just left some for ground support Oh, they took so much material out of here. This is crazy. Yeah, let's look back at what we were seeing before on the other side. And there's the face right there. So we'll go back and check out that other drift we side, uh, sidestepped on the way in. This is pure white, almost like chalk. That's wild. I wonder what the texture of that is. Hmm. 
soft like chalk too. See? I'm still at that face at the end of this drift and I was taking a closer look at the geology here. And this really does look like chalk in front of me. What's interesting is you can see really clearly in those lines right there, a little bit to the left, the contact zone, because this stuff looks very crystalline in nature. You see up there? That's very crystally. And yet that's just inches away from that chalk-like material. Cool, cool. Okay, i go back and check out that drift that was on our left on the way in. We were just looking down there. This is that drift on the left that we bypassed on the way in. Very different rock in here. It's got a spiky look. I think that's the face right there. But look how different this rock looks. This is very jagged and rough and spiky. So whatever they were mining for behind us, they ran this little exploratory crosscut back here, trying to find more of it, and obviously didn't. So they stopped. Colorful though, isn't it? And completely different. Yeah, that's the end right there. So I'll head back to that main attic and keep going forward. And I will raise my expectations for any cross cuts because I sure didn't expect all this back here. It's pretty cool. That's the drift we just checked out to show you how close that was to the portal. That's the portal right there. You still see, uh, excuse me, see, I wish I could see. You still feel airflow coming from ahead, so I'm hopeful about what might be ahead. Interesting rocks. Interesting little tidbit about this mine is that during the Cold War, this mine was actually assessed as being a good candidate for a fallout shelter by the United States government. And they drew up a detailed map and plan for this to be a fallout shelter. And the capacity they gave was approximately 500 people. So not quite sure how that would have worked, but they had plans on the books for that. Just geeking out about the geology a little bit. We've got the strap rail back, as you can see. Although without the rail, we just have the strips of wood underneath. I don't know that much about the history of this mine other than the, the Cold War bit. But obviously it's an older mine given the strap rail. And I'm also bent almost all the way over at my waist because it's smaller in size. and. The older mines were much smaller. Pretty long run here without any workings. Here's some of the strap rail. You can see it peeled up here. Right there, see? That's the strap rail. That's how it looks it's on the wood. Of course, not bent up like that, but still creeping ahead. Still feeling a really good airflow, which is a good sign. A little bit of ground fall here in this crumbly section. You see the rock changed completely from what we were just hiking through. And the ground fall reflects that. A little pocket here they're looking into. And over here, they're probably just exploring a little bit to test the mineral character of that section. See if they hit a vein or something that would be worth chasing. Still, it looks like it's a bend up ahead. I'm getting tired of bending over like this. Okay, a little hole right there, looks like. And then to the right, clear down a little cross cut. I don't know how deep that hole is. Not too deep. Not too deep at all. But, interesting mineralization back here. I hope those sparklies are coming across on the camera. Looks like the miners took some good samples from here. 
And this actually looks a bit like that vein that we went to where those big stopes were. That's another little chamber here. I don't know where my friend is. Anything cool back there? Nope. Just faces out right there? All right. It just faces out right there. Looks like they may have started going in this direction and then kinked a bit to the right. So we shall too, of course. Okay, looks like there's an ore chute up here. Much more mineralized back here. A little drift right there, it's been backfilled. Have to be a mouse to get through that slot. Okay, wow. So, drift going there. Drift going there. Maybe something else to the left. There's a drift and an ore chute going here. And it'll do the right hand rule. Pretty primitive boards right there. I like that. Again, just trees cut down outside and hold drug in the mine and you can see the they use the hand tools to hack them into the desired shape and do you see those little tiny holes right there that's where they would have stuck the candles in so this is definitely an older mine the ore chute's plugged of course Did you see, that? see the burlap there it's probably to prevent stuff slipping through the cracks on this ore chute which is very loaded Looking ahead. A little bit more spacious back here. There's some gobbing right there. Pretty nice example of it. Oh wow, this is really mineralized back here. Yeah, it's so predictable. All these mineralized spots. You can tell the miners got excited about and ran through either with just a little exploratory cross cuts or actually stove them out. This rock here is incredibly dangerous. You see how it's sheaved completely off right there. And that is ready to go at any time. That is very dangerous. A little pocket right there. Slip right past that rock. Keeps going around. See the track ties here in front of me. Still going. Huh. This mine is exceeding my expectations for size. Got a little cross cut here, it just fades out there. However, above. There's a stoop chamber that faces out there and also runs overhead. Hits that area. Again, those mineralized zones were of great interest to the miners. Here we go. LCH 39. 72, that's probably a mine explorer rather than any mining that's going on because these are actually rail here. This isn't strap rail, this is more conventional rail. Maybe they got a good run and got into some money and were able to track farther back. All right, this is interesting. So I'm starting the left. More graffiti here. Looks like 1959, W.B. Jones from Fallon was here. Bob, R.C.B., Lyle, had some visitors. His drift keeps running that way. There's a chamber here. See a 35 date. That's a fairly large ore chute with Julie written on it little chamber here I'll go look up there in a second right in front of me is the winds that drops down 
to there. Can't tell much about that right now. Looks like it might just be a little pocket right there. Can't tell if it runs off to the side or not yet. That looks fairly doable to go down. I think I want to see the rest of this level first though. But that does look doable. Come back to that one. Anyway, the, the Julie chute is behind me here and Julie is completely plugged as you can see. And it looks like this was another access to that stope above that Julie was feeding. But you see it's all come down completely there. So that's not going to happen. A bunch of fuse cord around my feet, which is kind of cool looking. And then as I said, this drift keeps running this way. Oh, I forgot to mention. So, you see how the track runs from this winds out? They would have had some kind of hoist or windlass or something here. It would have hauled the ore out, dumped it in the ore chute, and then trucked it out back towards the portal. Let's go see what's down here. That. That is, that's a rat nest, but you see they have all the cactus pieces in it. That's a pretty strong deterrent, actually. Interesting. And then, looks like we might get a view of the Julie Stope. Yeah, we do. So that's Julie right there. That's the top of Julie there, and all that material has come down and filled up Julie. And that is the continuation of the Julie Stope. And Julie runs up there as well. Yeah, that's Julie. And then this drift actually keeps running this way. Although it looks like it might be caved right there. Let's find out. Okay, just a little piece here, pocket here. See these big rocks here? Somebody put that there, they didn't fall in place. I think they probably just didn't feel like hauling that out. Took a little material out of here. That looks caved. Huh. A little stope running up here. There, and then behind me as well. Looks like they're doing lots of sampling and testing back here. Okay. See the rail runs through here. And might be possible to climb over that actually. Let me turn the camera off and take a closer look. I just climbed over that mess there. And the drift does keep going. It smells very ratty back here, which you can see why. A little crosscut chamber here. Doesn't go anywhere. Some old canvas and burlap bags at my feet. And the drift keeps going this way. Hopefully it doesn't just face out. Good. Keeps going. Got some packaging here. Ah, I've seen this before. This is white countered safety fuse, which is hard to tell. But I hope you guys can see that clearly. That's very old. I give us a date on this mine. Unfortunately, we just faced out. That's the end of the line right there. My friends just caught up to me, which is very timely. Yeah, end of the line. All right, we're just checking out the drift that ran that way. I'm back at the winds here. I'm gonna give it a shot climbing down there, see if there's anything else down there. So I'll pick up somewhere at the bottom. I just climbed down this ladder here. 
gotten into the chamber down here. There's something running off to my left and to my right. This way, there's a little backfilled, gobbed up area right there. There's your usual complement of cores and Budweiser cans down here, as well as some fuse cord and a package of Swisher Sweet. Can't talk. Swisher Sweet blunts. It's hard to say fast. Swisher Sweet. Anyway, a little drift running off this way. More fuse cord all over the place. There's some scraps of old newspaper here, but literally just scraps. That's older. Some burned burlap and a mouse nest or rat nest. This looks more exploratory. Oh, they might have done a little bit of production. production. Okay, um, hole in the ground here with like another dead rabbit down there. Poor thing must have fallen down the winds and then and then able to get out in the pitch darkness. So another skeleton up there actually. Huh. This just pinches out there. I think that's the, the face right there and they backfilled it a bit here. Little pocket here. And that is it for this side. Maybe the other side will be a little more extensive. I hope. We just look down there. I'm gonna now see what's over on this side. Little little stope action here. Let's see, cleaned out whatever was up there. And there's some stuff in front of me here. Uh, okay, that just ends right there. And there's this weird hole in the ground here. That's way too small for people to have moved through, so there might just be a little natural chamber down there. Huh. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't get down there. That's way too small for me to move through. Anyway, that is it for down here. Let's head back to that main junction. That's my backpack there, it's not something, some artifact. So I'll climb back up and out, pick up that main junction. We just checked out that area. I'm back at the junction from which we came in, back there. Something I did miss on the way in is you've got the ore chute there. And you can see the side of it all along here which is pretty neat. Runs all the way up there. And then it took out a little bit there. Those are off to the left. What's up next on the right is this contraption here. I just noticed, first of all, I got the sap coming out of the wood right there. But look, all these marks on here. I would have guessed those numbers were dates, but then you get something like that 113-1. It doesn't, it's hard to make sense of a date out of that. Normally they use these to track ore car loads, or in this case, Probably skip loads. You've got a chute running down here from up there. You've got this infrastructure here. See that canvas strip right there? I'm not sure how that would have been used. There's a pit right there. Got some glasses right there. That's probably the last mine explorer that went down there, didn't come back out. 
old beer bottles. There's something back there. I just bumped the board. I was very loose on the ground. That was nothing catastrophic. There's this chamber back here. Ooh. That makes me think I'm standing on a false floor right there. This sounds very hollow beneath me. There's a chamber here. This ladder runs up to the top of the ore chute there. You can see the side of it here. That's obviously this ore chute here. And then that pit is here. Just look back there where that false floor is. I know there's more writing on the post here if the camera will focus on it. Can't quite make it out. Let's try this light. It says, looks like CAR maybe, four feet from this something start, looks like tomorrow. I see 1914 as the date. If somebody can make out what that says, I'd be very curious. It looks like there's some more here. Whatever that might say. So, this pit here obviously is older, and then they built this. They ran down first, apparently, and then put this ore chute on top and ran up next. Got this old, pretty worn ladder here. There's looking down, down the winds. We're gonna try a rock test now. You got the rock handy? Indeed. You ready? Let's give it a shot. Wow, that goes quite a way down. And that does not look, I guess, in great shape. There's a series of platforms. It runs deeper than right there. A whole series of platforms. That's, uh, huh. that goes deep and that's old. That other minor explorer is probably still down there. All right, then behind that, got this drift running back here. Let's go look at this. Pretty colorful back here. Different type of rock than we saw before. A bunch of sheet metal here, it's probably gonna be loud to walk on. Very old timber supports right there. That's probably 150 year old, 125 year old tree. Or, you know, it was chopped down 125, 150 years ago. And it keeps going. Huh. Got something on the left here. Huh. Just have some lagging on the left here. Holding back this rock. Huh. All right. It's holding back the rib here, and they put rock in there to help um, support it. In other words, you don't want to have a void, so they, the miners would fill up the void, so the rock doesn't have room to move. That's why they put the rock and stuff behind the lagging. Interesting timber support here as well. And up here. That creative work with the timbers. I have to say, weird triangular shapes and such. It's very unusual timber work. And you can see they jammed it up here to fill that void. Again, you don't want voids for you and timber support. That was interesting. Uh, it keeps going for the way. Still going. More tumor supports. You see the remains of track ties here. Wrap on our way back.
has more interesting timber supports. Huh. Mine just took on a very rodent-like smell. Probably a bunch of rat nests back here. Really intrigued by the timber work the miners did here. This is very creatively done. Huh. I don't normally geek out on timber work quite that much, but that's interesting. Okay, fairly featureless in this section. They're running back. More of the creative timber work. Those little bits and pieces of wood down here. Probably left over from when they're cutting the wood to size. Oh, we face out right there. Okay. Let's go check out those two drifts that are off to our left on the way in. Here's a look back at the creative timbers. All right, I'll pick up back at that junction. Back at the junction, we just went down there. We've got these drifts off to the left to check out. Next one on the right will be this one. Which I thought it faced out. But no, it does not face out. That's very mazy. Cuts through. There, I'm assuming that's the other drift, and it ends here. Huh. Well, that's kind of cool. I'm pretty sure that's the other drift there. If not, I'll climb through that hole and see what's back there. Oh, that's where I just came in from. And this is the next drift. Huh. A hole right there. I don't know if we're going to cut into that or not. Okay, there's a little side pocket here. And that's where we just look through there. So I'm glad I don't have to crawl through that. And I'll bet that this ties into that other hole. Okay, so it's just a little backfill drift. We're not missing anything here. On the ground in front of me, we've got Mount Diablo. Portland Cement. San Francisco. Huh. I couldn't I didn't think they were talking about Mount Diablo near Walnut Creek, but then when I see the San Francisco, I'm starting to wonder. Well, as we're going down this drift, might as well continue. Very narrow back here. Face is out right there, except for that weird hole. I'm gonna go check that out. And there's this going off to the right. This is very much like a maze back here. It's interesting. that little uh, cross cut that had that pit in the back that's that pit right there I guess I just didn't notice this hole so that's all connected and they've got this interesting timber work overhead again mixed up with this drift here I sure hope you guys are seeing these colors because they're pretty impressive, to say the least. Very colorful. Faces out right there. It looks like a rat dragged one of those Portland cement bags back here. <sighs> looks like it's got some calcite right there. It's that chalky white looking stuff. 
I mean, the color is chalky white. It doesn't have that texture at all, but it has that color. All right, I'm gonna go back to where we left off. And I'll pick up from there. We just looked down there. We have this area ahead to check out soon. Looks like it bends off in different directions. They must have been doing a lot of exploring back here. Seems like they found a good run off that crosscut we hit on the way in. And all the rest of this has just been exploratory. Well, there was that big pit. An ore chute back of the junction too. They must have found something good there as well. But a lot of this back here seems exploratory. I don't see any sign of production. That's pinched off right there. It's kind of a weird little mine. Hard to imagine them fitting 500 people on here, but the government always knows what it's doing, right? Looks like they had a face here and then decided to go to the left. A little pocket here. Actually, to be fair, I can kind of see why they'd be interested in this mine because the ground back here is pretty good. And that's it. Faced out there. I've got some unique mineralization here. Interesting little mine. Interesting little mine. Back at that weird winds or shoot combination station, our friend Jake is starting to make his way down the ladder there. As you can see, we'll see how things look down there. First broken rung. First broken rung encountered. Not a deal ender. Not a deal ender, he says. Looks like he's about to get to the first platform. 